Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Kathy Schmitz, Executive Director of the Vilas County Economic Development Corporation. And welcome to our second remote worker, and some of you are also entrepreneurs, Meetup, where we really provide an opportunity for you to learn and engage with both us as the BCEDC and each other. And so the topic uh, today is a subject that's near and dear to all of us, uh, which is broadband and specifically the state of broadband in Vilas County. And today we're delighted to have Bill Demuth and uh, Bill is the VCEDC board member and our broadband lead. Um, and he is uh, our presenter today. So the format for the program will be to have Bill share information for about 10 to, 10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll open it up for a chance for you to ask uh, your questions about broadband. And we'll meet until uh, about 1 p.m. And the session today, as you heard, is being recorded. And we will be sharing that on our web and social media platforms. So for now, if everyone would please uh, mute your devices until we get to the Q&A and uh, join me in welcoming Bill Nemuth. Thank you, Kathy. And uh, I, um, I better talk fast. So um, let me share my... Let me share my deck. Kathy, you see my single slide, correct? I do. Okay, fantastic. Well, good day, everyone. And uh, thanks for joining us. And thanks to uh, VCEDC for, uh, for having me speak today. So um, as Kathy said, I'm Bill. My name is Bill Nemeth. And uh, my background, my professional background is uh, most of my career was spent with Kimberly Clark Corporation. Uh, I, I spent about 35 years there and left as Director of Global Security and Corporate Air Transportation, which is just a, it was a great career. And I uh, traveled uh, to over 55 countries. I'm not sure if I've reached that 65 mark yet, but uh, still, uh, still working on it. I left Kimberly Clark now a little, well, little over two years ago and started uh, my own uh, global consulting firm, which I'll talk about uh, in a little bit called Loss Mitigation Solutions. I, I don't know how, maybe I'm like you. Uh, I've got a long history of volunteer leadership. And one of the things about being a volunteer leader is it helped my career and vice versa, because I was able to try different things, experiment, especially into certain areas. And that's probably one of the reasons I am here today with VCEDC and doing work in the broadband area. I'm a ham radio operator. And um, so the three organizations at the top, uh, two of them are 501c3 nonprofits that I started and led for um, the better part of 20 years. And then the other organization is emergency services group related to ham radio. And uh, I led the uh, state in that regard. We had 1400 folks who I led and coached uh, throughout the state of Wisconsin for five years last decade. So that kind of ended that chapter and I've started a new chapter. Uh, and uh, so VCEDC is one of the organizations that I'm active in, the town of Boulder Junction, we'll probably talk a bit about that. Um, and then some, some other uh, areas, ASIS International is the largest security organization in the world with about 35,000 members and I have a senior leadership position there. So What's probably very important to all of you and you can relate to is I've had many offices in many places throughout the world over the years. And uh, some of you probably recognize the photo on the top left hand corner. That's Chicago O'Hare. And especially in the early days of my travel, I would go through there back and forth, sometimes several times a week. And the one thing on those pay phone booths is they, at some point, I'm not quite sure when, but they put a little uh, RJ11 connector on it. Why was that important? It's because you could take your cable and plug it in and plug it into your laptop computer where your modem was located to download your email. Well, that was like a big deal. 
So as time went along, you know, the offices changed. The photo in the lower left-hand corner is a broom closet. And I always joked, hey, I can work anywhere, including a broom closet. And I did a couple of times, as long as there was a land jack. This was before the days of Wi-Fi. As long as there was a land jack in there and I could get what? I could get broadband. <clears throat> so um, the photo on the uh, lower left is uh, one of my favorite hotels in the world, it's the Dubai Mar uh, Mar Marriott Marquis. And I think uh, that photo comes from the 65th floor, which was a great view. And uh, in the early days, the photo on the right, top right is uh, my office uh, after we moved into our, to our new home. So I've been a remote worker since 1995 and um, have electronics, have broadband, can work anywhere. So, you know, remote work is kind of the best of both worlds, and um, you have the ability, especially here in Vilas County, to be able to go out and enjoy nature. It's a beautiful day to day, and as soon as we're finished, I'm going out for a bit. But what do we need? We need a broad band connection, and that's really what we're here to talk about today. <clears throat> So our history in uh, Boulder Junction, my wife Sue and I, <clears throat> we, we uh, have been part-time in Boulder Junction since 2000. My history in the area goes back to the early 70s, and uh, we have made this our full-time home starting in 2015. <clears throat> so it's been a great place, but in the early days, it was a little bit different. It was really trying to find a broadband connection. We built a cottage um, in uh, 2005. We didn't put a phone in it, and that was probably a mistake because I didn't even have uh, a, a dial-up uh, for, uh, for modem. So it was always that quest for where can I get connectivity? <clears throat> and I, I put a couple of photos in here. The uh, photo here, is, um, let's see, must be 20 years ago now, I was in a position where I was really 24-7, 365. <clears throat> so I had to have communications around the globe. And these were little clamshell devices. Maybe you had one of these. These were Motorola texting devices before texting was even a thing. And I had this during uh, September 11th, 2001, and almost burnt the thing up but it worked and it worked great. The photo here is a Siemens 5451 and it was the first smartphone that I had. And you could do more than just make a call. You could text on it and you could also, it was very archaic, but you could also visit a website. I was digging through my things and uh, I found my first phone that was a little bit smarter with a color display and it's a Motorola and this thing still works so all of this stuff I used to communicate and that's really one of the big reasons why we need broadband so I remember many days and you you may or may not be doing this today chasing around trying to find a broadband connection so you can do your work Thank goodness for the, um, the Boulder Junction Library, which put up an access point. And um, back in the early days, I was one of the very few people who would go grab that Wi-Fi and, um, and get my email. And then as time progressed, starting to upload um, information to systems that we used, you know the routine. <clears throat> in 2009, the iPhone, well, I got my first iPhone. Some of you may have received it earlier. Um, and it was incredible. It was an incredible thing. And even today, today, it's still an incredible thing. So all of this stuff, all these devices we use every day, and sometimes we take them for granted. But especially in those early days, we had to go home. And, you know, when you've got a great day like today, or especially for us, it was in the fall of the year, you know, those pristine, cool, crisp days when those trees are at their peak and you want to stay, you got to go home 
because you need the broadband connection. So let's, uh, as we transition here, let's do a poll question. And Kathy, uh, could you launch this, uh, please? <clears throat> so the question is, <clears throat> this is the first of the two questions. Have you returned, have you had to return home early because you needed a fast and reliable broadband connection? Yes or no? And it looks like, uh, Kathy, we're going to have to do the second poll question as well so everybody can, can submit. So if you would populate that first question, please. And then the second question will or is, is your broadband today where you are sufficient for your remote work? Yes or no? So go ahead and submit those. Uh, we should be able to see the results. And um, while Kathy is doing that, we'll give you about five more seconds to fill those out. How are we looking, Kathy? Um, good, we have uh, attendees now viewing the questions 13 of 15. Okay. So 86%. Who have voted? Okay, um, well, let's let's move ahead in here, and then we'll we'll close out that poll and share the results with everyone. If you'd like, I can do so, it now, Bill. Please go ahead, Kathy. All right, we'll end the polling. Um, I'll give everyone ten seconds. <laughs> we have ninety-three percent that have voted. All right, one more, okay. one more. All right, we're ending the polling. Okay, I'm sharing the results. All right, so most of you, the majority of you have had to return home early and it's the same amount whose broadband connection is sufficient. So those, the, the first one is kind of a historical, um, historical question, could still be, um, could be accurate for today, but the second one is really about today. And uh, that's interesting, but what it shows is it shows that 43% of you who are remote workers don't have sufficient broadband access. And this is specifically what the VCEDC is trying to, is trying to improve in the county. So let's, uh, let's, let's go back and um, uh, tell you about our Boulder Junction full-time experience. So when we moved here, we moved to a older cottage. And um, one of the really the pre prerequisites for moving here, I was still with Kimberly Clark at the time, was that we needed, I, know that, I knew that we needed 10 megabits per second. We were able to check that box because um, working with our provider CenturyLink, I was able to get what was called a bonded pair. So that worked okay. And then we moved out of the old cottage that we had and moved into our other property and I could only get four megabits. And I was really, really worried about that. Um, that was all we were able to get. However, it was workable with one device on the network with four megabits and I ran a VPN all day and some of you might be doing the same thing it wasn't great but it did what it needed to do so i did that for 15 months video conferences were a little tough but it, it did work so now we have 20 megabits and it's better but one of the things i'll talk more about this in a moment one of the things that i'm experiencing is this is all download the upload speed is not good and I am uploading maybe like you are more and more information to the cloud, to other systems, to other organizations. So soon in Boulder Junction, we will have one gigabit over one gigabit and we can't wait. So a bit about loss mitigation solutions. Um, I, I, I'm ex almost exclusively a remote worker today, and I don't really see that changing a tremendous amount as we get into the future. Uh, organizations, um, I think, are going to they're going to put more scrutiny to what they um, uh, to what they spend, especially for travel costs. And at the end of the day, in most cases, there's not uh, there's not a great 
reason to travel like we did in the past. So we'll see how that goes. My, my closest client is 200 miles away, um, clients outside of the area, and uh, but I need more speed and you probably need more speed for uploads or any interaction or downloads um, for software updates or what have you. <clears throat> higher speeds and higher bandwidth is absolutely essential. So let's take a look at what VCEDC is doing for broadband in Vilas County. Our strategy is Vilas First and Vilas First in promotion in RDOF, and I'll tell you about RDOF here more in a moment, in Wisconsin Public Service uh, Commission grants in broadband speeds and with the internet service providers. So one thing uh, Jim Tuckwell uh, helped us with a couple of weeks ago was to do some research and determine how Vilas County has benefited in Wisconsin Public Service grants. Over the past, what would that be, seven years now, Vilas County has won $5.5 million in grants, 4.6 million over the last two years. And that is in Wisconsin, the last two years for certain, it is the number one county in the state. We are putting Vilas first. So this is our map, our service map, if you will, which is version 1.0 and version 2.0 will be coming out uh, in a bit, but let me walk through this with you. So the lighter blue shade is the CenturyLink territory. They're the telecom provider and those territories are still kind of accepted from, you know, when, when it was regulated a regulated utility, what, in the 70s and early 80s. The pink shaded area is the frontier communications territory. Now, both of those telcos deliver broadband via DSL, which is fiber, to a node, kind of an interface device, which then utilizes the copper network to homes and businesses. Not great speeds, not um, particularly reliable, fraught with problems. It was last decade's technology. So that is, those are the two telecom providers in Vilas County. Uh, we also have uh, SonicNet, which is this fixed wireless provider and these towers with the, uh, with the signal coming out of them. That signifies most of their locations. Fixed wireless has a fairly small uh, footprint, if you will, doesn't cover large spaces, especially in our area of hills, 120 foot pine trees, but it is it does work and it is a stopgap and it provides something where there may not be anything. We also have um, a company that's really based out of um, Oneida County um, in the Three Lakes area called Astria Connect. They have uh, upgraded their network in the southern part of Vilas County. Uh, and we are encouraging them to continue to expand. <clears throat> The other provider, a fairly large provider, is um, Charter Communications, sometimes known as Spectrum. They are in these areas, and uh, they are also expanding right now in the towns of Washington and Lincoln, and we're one of our RDOF winners, and I'll talk about RDOF in a bit. We have a local company, and this icon signifies their fiber, which is a company out of Eagle River called Choicetel. And Choicetel delivers exclusively fiber to the premise. And their packages start with uh, like 25 megabits up to 100 megabits. And they are currently expanding their network in the town of St. Germain, where they're going to provide fiber to the premise for all of the living units in St. Germain. This is a big deal. 
And let's see if I've missed anything. I don't think I have. I will say, however, that ChoiceTel runs a Wi-Fi network in downtown Eagle River. So I'll come back to that point in a moment. And then finally, the last project I want to talk about is a fiber to the premise project to all the living units in the town of Boulder Junction. That construction is going on right now. Uh, there are two phases which should take it through 2022, but uh, about 1400 living units uh, will uh, get um, high speed fiber. And the speeds on that are going to be 200 megabits per second, and that's symmetrical, uh, or one gigabit per second, and that's also symmetrical. And that means that it's the same download speed as it is upload speed. So that's what's going on in Vilas County right now. Let's talk about the future a little bit. Some of you may remember a federal program called Connect America Funds, CAF for short. There were two pieces of that. And that program, I know it gets criticized, but that program was very important for moving the fiber infrastructure deeper into Vilas County. Well, the next generation of CAF is a program called Rural Digital Opportunity Fund, or RDF. In Vilas County, <clears throat> we are going to see $40 million of investment over the next 10 years. And in Vilas County, two companies, two ISPs, have won that funding. In the blue shaded area, uh, this is to signify the um, the uh, kind of the, the pieces or the, the regions on what uh, they want is a company called LTD Broadband. So they won, they won this area and they won uh, this area of Cloverland and Lincoln and a little bit of a sliver in the town of Lincoln. Everything else, the pink area was won by charter communications. And you may sit back and say, wow, that's great. In 10 years, everybody is going to have fiber to the premise. Well, life is a, more, a little more complicated than that. So this map shows in the green shaded areas, the specific census blocks that these companies won. And what, what that means is, <clears throat> let's go back here. So this is the town of Plum Lake. Plum Lake was a big winner in RDOF. One of the reasons why is because their current internet speeds are not very good. So there aren't too many gap areas. But if we get over here in Arbor Vita, Boulder Junction, Presque Isle, uh, Manitowish waters, there are many non RDOF areas. And somehow that gap, we need to close that gap. So this is an area that I'll talk about here uh, a little bit in a moment. It's going to be imperative for communities to still be involved, to work with the Wisconsin PSC, to look at other grant funding. So this map can become this map. So it is, the whole county is entirely covered. This is a busy slide. You'll get these slides. I'm not going to go over everything, but VCEDC is really, really, really involved in bringing better broadband to the county. And uh, we have a number of different strategies. We have a lot of things going on. As you can see, we have this uh, program called Broadband Buddies. We're working with 11 towns and the tribe. We have 15 towns and the tribe in Vilas County. So we're working with the vast majority to improve their broadband connectivity. Our goal really is to make Vilas County a broadband destination. And I would say, especially as we look at our neighboring counties, we're in pretty good shape. We have a lot of fiber that's already in the ground. We have a variety of internet service providers that create some complexity, but in the end, it really is a good thing. So what are those hot areas right now through 2023? The city of Eagle River, pretty good. 
really pretty good. There are only a couple of spots that could use improvement. The towns of Boulder Junction and St. Germain, they will have fiber to the prem throughout premise uh, throughout by 2023-2024 with um, St. Germain. Land O'Lakes, Lincoln, and Washington are in really good shape. Are there some spots that aren't? Absolutely. But overall, those are the towns, the locations, the communities that are what we consider hot or potential broadband destinations. There are some smaller pockets uh, throughout the county, and um, VCEDC is a broadband survey out right now, and we are trying to better understand what those hot areas are, and that data that you provide to us is going to help us really fill in those blanks. I mentioned the fixed wireless uh, systems. There are several of those. There is some fast DSL in some of the areas. And DSL isn't necessarily bad. It's just an older technology, but um, it's, it's usable. That's what I'm using right now. And some of you are probably also. Cable, really good technology, really good solutions, uh, specific fiber connections. There are some of those existing uh, and there will be more of them. And then Starlink. So if you're one of the 43% of folks who are struggling with broadband and you're a remote worker, there are some other options for you. So number one is Elon Musk's company, uh, which is part of SpaceX called Starlink. And Starlink is a really a new technology satellite system. Two of our work group, um, our broadband work group members have been testing it since last fall good stuff. Um, really good technology. It's robust. It's reliable and works well. What's the problem? The problem is it's not commercialized yet. They're still in beta. So if you sign up, there's no guarantee you're going to get the service. And, um, you know, there's an upfront cost, and then it can be a little bit expensive monthly, but it is an option, especially if you need it or if you need a backup. I already spoke about the libraries and the downtown Eagle River Wi-Fi network. Great, great resource. I think you're, you'll be seeing other Wi-Fi networks um, in the county as well. <clears throat> Coffee shops, bars, restaurants, you're probably taking advantage of those now. Storefronts and businesses. So my plan, if we weren't able to get appropriate broadband when we moved here in the first place was to go to one of the local businesses and see if they would be open to me like renting a room every week or a month. I didn't have to do that, but I think that opportunity does exist if you do not have effective broadband at your home in Vilas County. I think the bottom line is just be creative. So what can you do? And Kathy, I'm not sure if you have the ability to grab this uh, link, but this is a link to our survey. If you could put that in the chat, folks can click on that and um, they can fill out the survey as we're talking here. So VCEDC has published a broadband survey and we have over a thousand responses. We're looking for more and this gives us data that we're going to use for many different purposes. And one of the purposes is to create a better map than what we have today. <clears throat> you can contact your community's chairperson and encourage them to get involved, that person to get involved um, with um, expanding high-speed broadband in your community. Um, discuss broadband expansion with friends, families, neighbors, you know, whoever will listen. And, you know, you might consider becoming part of a high-speed broadband committee or even leading it because we really, really need active, strong leaders in this area so we can continue to make Vilas first. So I think as we look at the success that some of the communities have had in Vilas County with enhancing their broadband, 
every community can do it. Having a vision, creating a mission, developing a strategy, and then making sure that objectives are put in place and then executed upon. You know, that's kind of basic stuff. And I don't want to minimize how difficult it is, but it is very doable. So we already answered our second question. So now it's over to you. Let's talk some broadband. So who has a question or a comment on broadband? And please feel free to put your questions either in the chat or just unmute yourselves and, and ask Bill or uh, myself or our board chairman, Jim Tuckwell, any one of us a question. Yeah, and Kathy, we, we might, um, while, while the questions are coming in, we might just go over who's on the uh, uh, BCEDC broadband work group. It's, um, it's yourself, Kathy, it's Jim Tuckwell, it's Jonathan Sharp, who I think is with us uh, today. It's Mike uh, Dunning, who is the IT director for Vilas County. And, uh, and I have the pleasure of working very closely with these very talented folks. Okay, we have one question coming in. Um, I use Northwoods Connect out of Rhinelander. How do they fit into the future of broadband? Well, Northwoods Connect is, um, they are a Rhinelander based company and their footprint within um, Oneida County is quite large. They currently have a large project. It's a uh, Wisconsin Public Service Commission uh, grant project in Forest County, where I think they're building 17 towers. We've had some conversations with them, VCEDC has. Um, I don't believe that they've made any uh, significant movement to expand their network into Vilas County. However, you know, it's... <laughs> We are open to working with anyone who can provide um, enhanced broadband service. Okay, another question. Do you have any sense of the timing for RDOF phase one? Well, that's a million dollar question. Well, actually that's a, that's a $40 million question. <clears throat> um, so this is, this is what we know. Let me see if I can explain this easily without getting into too much detail. So <clears throat> the auctions, and it was a reversed auction based upon service delivery speeds. So obviously the federal government, state government, their priority is fiber to the premise because that is really the most, that's the best technology today. And um, all the experts in this field think it's the best technology for the future. And that technology today delivers easily one gigabit download and upload. In five years from now, it could be 10 gigabits, 100 gigabits, you get the idea. So Ardolf Auctions, uh, the winners were announced in early November. Um, and then after that, they had to go through what's called a long form application. So the long form is to provide uh, the FCC a bunch of additional information, especially about how they're going to go about executing and implementing the projects. Our understanding is, is that the FCC is reviewing those long term, those long form applications now, and uh, they will be coming back to the providers in the not too distant future. We think that that means sometime in July or August. The both Charter and LTD have already started to ramp up their organizations in preparation for these projects. Um, it's, you know, these are in, in Wisconsin, LTD won $170 million, give or take, of uh, expansion. And um, Charter wasn't too far behind, was somewhere in the neighborhood of 132 or 135 million dollars. So really big stuff. Um, we think that construction 
will start in some places in 2022. We are obviously trying to make Vilas first. Um, we don't know if we'll see construction here in 2022, um, but having being in that three year window from 2022 to 2025 is critical. So that's kind of our window. And if we can get projects to hit the ground in 2022, that is our goal. All right, thank you, Bill. Another question, uh, is there anyone I can reach out to, to personally uh, or personally that has experience with Starlink? I'm on the waiting list and have reservations after hearing reports of intermittent service outages. I live in Saner. All right. Well, let's get some let's get some remote worker to remote worker stuff going on here. We're Jonathan Sharp. I saw that he joined us initially. Is he here? I will check. I, th I think he might have had to drop off because I, yeah. I don't see him. OK, he might have had to. So Bill, it's but, but, but he does he, he, in, 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 in absentia. If uh, um, if one wanted to, they could just go to our website to the broadband page, and you'll see a, a wonderful blog that Jonathan has written. That you know, I think I think answers almost any question anybody might have about Starlink. Um, and and as Bill mentioned earlier, Jonathan's been very very pleased um, with his results awesome. and, and, and with the reliability. Yeah, and, and, and I would add that. On the other hand, on a global basis, Starlink is making lots of promises and not following up with very many of them. If you go on Twitter, you can see that there are people around the world waiting years for that service. And um, so I we put in our $99, Kathy is aware, and have heard nothing. And there's no, there is no customer service available. Maybe it's because it's beta, maybe because it's Elon Musk. I don't know, <laughs> but it, um, it's frustrating to those of us who've gotten nothing and yet our $99 has been taken from our banks. Well, and that is, that is one of the, how can I say this, uh, Carol? This is one of the <laughs> cautions that were taken with Starlink. And as Jim said, Jonathan's experience with it, on a, and he uses it 24-7 has been really, really good. And most of the folks who do use it, that's been, their, that's been their experience. The technological piece of the way they're going about doing it makes perfect sense. It is, um, it's a robust platform, but, <laughs> and here's the but, you gotta execute and commercialization is everything. And they're really about a year behind commercialization where they initially said they were going to be. So we are optimistic, but conservative in our approach. And, you know, the proof is in the pudding. And uh, we're not sure what the delay is in them launching. It could be the build out of their network. It could be the fact that they have they have uh, requested from the FCC to expand their license so they can expand their base and that has not been approved. It's a lot of different things, but uh, fingers crossed. And, and, and Carol, you're right. We also have yet to find a, a human being that we can speak with there. And, and uh, Jonathan has made himself available to uh, help with um, uh, questions about Starlink on email or phone calls. So. Um, I know, Carol, you have emailed back and forth with him, and he's still happy to do that, but he just, he also shares what Bill said, that, that yeah, there is no um, live body that you can talk to, and I think it is, right now, it is hit or miss, but I, I believe he said on a recent Zoom that hopefully by the end of the year, it, it would definitely filter out to many more people, um, so he's still available to, to answer any questions that you might have. Um, I know that you did ask another question on here. Uh, we are on the fringes of the town of Lincoln. Uh, we will be getting buried power lines next year. Can cable be laid at the same time? Our industry is coordinating. 
Uh, unfortunately, they're not. And uh, so this subject came up um, last week on a Wisconsin PSC broadband um, webinar. Same question was asked. And, um, you know, the answer was no, there, it's just that type of coordination is not taking place. Not sure why, but it's not. And it could be the fact that the broadband is not a regulated utility like power is. And there seems to be some rationale and reason for that makes perfect sense. Um, and uh, the folks from Wisconsin PSC were disappointed that that hadn't happened, especially, you know, in the past. Um, so I, I, could it happen? Sure, it could. But the, the, the internet service providers and utility companies need to get together to make it happen. And nobody seems to know that, that those conversations are taking place. Can that not be part of the effort? Um, is it, does it sound like it is? It, it didn't sound like it, Carol. Know, I've never seen it happen anywhere across the United States, having lived in a big city. You know, it's it really is almost impossible. But to me, we're, we're on the cutting edge of new things in new areas. Can, it, do you think that this is should be something that's addressed or are you just going to proceed assuming it's not going to happen? Yeah, it, it didn't sound like it, there was any strategy in place for it to happen. But what's interesting, though, is kind of back in the old days when electrical power and uh, was either aerial or was buried it was also buried with telephone cable but why because teleco companies during those days were regulated utilities and that seems to be the big difference so we were in this unregulated era now with isps and it sure doesn't sound like there's any interest from any of the isps to become regulated and there are some big, powerful companies that are saying, no, absolutely not. There, there have been some initial discussions, though. Uh, and again, we'll have to see how all this transpires um, of, of the RDOF winners to potentially uh, work with the you know, electric utilities and um, take advantage of, of their um, poles. It not necessarily bury the fiber, but you know, string it, string it alongside the electrical wires on on existing poles. So that that might offer a way to um, speed things up and and do some teaming. But that that's just been in the discussion phase so far. And and we know one of the downsides, especially in this part of the world, is the utility companies have been trying to bury their cable because above ground snow, ice, a lot of trees, it's, uh, it's very expensive to maintain. So as Jim said, I, I think that's certainly a, um, that is certainly a desire from some of the ISPs, um, but they may have not totally uh, completed their, um, their financial formula on that yet. I just tossed something in. I'm Kurt Drum. Uh, I'm a business instructor with Nicolay College. And I'm in Three Lakes, so you almost make me feel guilty that I'm in Oneida County instead of Milas County because you guys uh, sound like you got a great effort going on. Uh, you talk about burying uh, uh, cable. Uh, years ago, WPS, when they ran power and gas underneath the chain of lakes, uh, like in Long Lake area where Honey Rock is, they dropped fiber in there. And Astria Connect now, that fiber ran over to Highway X on the east side of Long Lake, and they're going to activate, or they're working to activate that fiber, which would get high-speed broadband on that whole east side of the chain, including Honey Rock Camp, which is huge for them because they run year-round activities on that campus. Uh, I've been working quite a bit with the Astria people here in the town of Three Lakes, and we just got approved this week that uh, our little uh, 19 resident stretch uh, off of Highway X uh, by Wheeler Island, they're going to put in brand new, uh, brand new network here to feed all 19 homes this summer. And the lowest speed they offer is 50, gig, uh, 50 megs up to one gigabyte at you know, pretty competitive rates. So they'll be burying the uh, 
the, I think it's cable here to tie in with the cable that runs down Highway X, but we just got approved this week and took a lot of work to do it, but we're pretty thrilled that we'll be getting some high speed access. That's awesome, Kurt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you think Astria is going to be interested in expanding further? I'm only half a mile from them. Um, <laughs> oh, no, I maybe, would... it's, maybe it's three quarters of a mile, but. We're right on the county line. <laughs> I would I would connect you with uh, Jessica Kuhn, who's their sales director. Okay. Uh, I've been working both with her and with their with their VP on some of the technical issues. Uh, I'm a techie guy because I've spent 20 years in broadcasting, so I'm kind of interested in learning how the whole network expansion thing goes. But they're going to put in a whole new network for us that ties in 19 homes. So. Uh, and there's a couple of businesses based in here. There's a number of us that are teachers that tie in. Uh, both my wife and I work remotely and we're on Teams and Zoom calls every day. We've got Frontier right now. It's it's marginal at best, but it works. Uh, but we're, we're thrilled that uh, in the next couple of months, we'll be getting you know, a, a minimum of 50 megs for speed. So their Astria is really working hard in Three Lakes. Good. They've got the, the lot their head in is right behind where the Oneida Village was. And there are giant spools of orange cable to be buried that are sitting there staged ready for installation. So they're really doing a great job here. Yeah, and, and the VCEDC was really pleased, uh, Carol, working with you initially as well to help connect Honey Rock with Astria and, and Northwoods Connect and, and to try to see what options might be available out there. So, and, and for you just being a half a mile to three quarters of a mile away, I wanted to um, ask how desperate you are and how you look at a, in a hard hat. <laughs> well, I <laughs> Maybe you could help like, string some cable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can we can measure our success in, in the number of people, you know, that we that we connect and allow to do it. But I don't think until we have all the fringes covered, we've really accomplished the, the total goal, because I think there's a question there about Conover, you know, it's just um, the fringes are important, and that's what the whole purpose of global of, of broadband access to all communities is. You know, it's not just about Milwaukee. We got to get to the North Woods. It's not just about Eagle River. We got to get to the fringes. So, um, I'm y'all are doing great work. Well, and, and getting getting that last, so I'll provide two comments here. Uh, the first one is getting that last mile especially, you know, and I'll provide some input for you from Boulder Junction. So we have 79 living units that are in a couple of different locations. And the cost for those 79 living units is like $1.4 million, just because there's so much infrastructure that has to go to these small clumps. And we have a lot of situations like that in our own towns. So when you sit back and say, well, is there, a, is there a better model that can be used? Perhaps, um, but, but this is where funding, this is where grants is really critical because there's no way, there's absolutely no way a small, medium or large company is going to be able to do that and get a return on their investment. Just won't happen. So that's, that's one side of it. The other side of it is something, Kurt, that you said. And it's interesting because we have, you know, one, especially one area in Boulder Junction, we are kind of scratching our heads. Well, how do we, you know, how do we balance what we're spending here with getting that connectivity to everyone? And so CenturyLink is our ISP and they told us about exactly what you said with running cable on the bottom of a lake, right? And we thought, hey, there's our answer. But uh, this is the challenge is that apparently the requirements for doing that have uh, gotten much, much, much more restrictive in the last five years. And the response that we got was, well, wow, trying to do that today is going to be really, really, really difficult. So we ended up not pursuing it. It's a DNR issue, right? It is. You're right. Yeah. Because we have cable across catfish as well from the old days of, of uh, uh, I guess it was, um, what's the old G, I mean, uh, you know, what Frontier used to be. Oh, the GTE. GTE. Yeah. And um, 
you know, the DS, the, the uh, frontier technician was telling me, well, we used to have that and it's still there, but we can't <laughs> do anything with it. I'm like, shoot, that's even less than half a mile. I could swim there. <laughs> Well, and, and that's where hybrid technologies like point to point microwave really, I mean, it works, it's efficient, it doesn't cost a lot. But, you know, we, we all, we all, companies included, kind of get into their core and they don't go beyond that core, they don't go beyond that expertise. And internet service providers are no different. So, although technologically it makes sense from a financial standpoint it makes sense it's just not an area where many of them play well and i i also support the fact that our our, our lakes are fragile and they're they have a large impact happening right now so i everything I is trade-offs environmentally that would be another question of mine but i think you have a bunch of questions and i'll stop interrupting <laughs> No, oh, good questions, Carol. Thank you. Uh, we do have a question from Amanda. How does Conover fit into the broadband or RDOF expansion, specifically the downtown portion of Conover? Um, well, I, I, I think Conover is pretty well positioned. Um, don't want to speak for the, uh, the broadband committee there uh, too much, but um, they submitted a project to charter that we are trying to encourage charter to do. It's not, it's not RDOF. Um, charter communications already has infrastructure um, in that area. It's going up to Phelps. <clears throat> so that is certainly an option. And uh, we think that that's going to be a good option. Uh, RDOF and then not non RDOF. It's uh, it's somewhat convenient for charter. So that's the one side. The other side is Choicetel. And Choicetel's infrastructure goes up through Conover, not too far away from kind of the downtown area of Conover. And that is another option. This is, this is one of the challenges though, where RDOF, because these areas have essentially been won in auctions by these two companies, is that anti-competitive. And you know, how do local and regional providers and even other big providers deal with that? And that's some of what we call the funding fog and, and the whole broadband fog that we're trying to clear out. So we have a defined path forward. But I would say just based upon everything, Conover is probably in a pretty good position. A lot of fiber in sitting in Conover right now. Good, thank you, Bill. Uh, so we have uh, about six minutes left. Um, last call for questions or comments. So let me let me ask a question. I'd like to get some feedback. Are from what you understand about what we're doing in Vilas County, are we doing the right things? Or what other feedback do you have for us? What else should we be doing? You can type it, unmute, whatever. Should we call on somebody? <laughs> we, we could, what, the old-fashioned the old way we it's could. It's the way they used to do it in school. So Kurt, you're, you're kind of independent. You're on Oneida's side. What else should we be doing here in Vilas? Sorry to pick on you. Well, not really. <laughs> uh, no, no problem. I'm normally on the other side of getting to call on students. Uh, but no, I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed. I, I work uh, quite a bit with Jeff Verdern on the Oneida County EDC side on a number of other projects. I know they have efforts working on, on the uh, broadband side. And uh, boy, I, I'm impressed with what you're doing to try to lead these efforts. So you've got some great contacts and you know, putting Vilas County first, uh, you know, except for the fact that I'm on the other side of the border. <laughs> uh, but I won our little battle. You know, it took a lot of work with Astria uh, and we're thrilled that uh, they're expanding in Three Lakes. 
And just judging from the amount of uh, big spools of orange gable out there, I'm sure they're going to a whole lot more places than we are. They're expanding the entire uh, former cable system with new equipment using the existing underground cable uh, to gigabit speed throughout the entire Three Lakes area. And we would we would love to see Astria expand in in Vilas and uh, you know fingers crossed that'll uh, that'll happen. So great work there, Kurt. Yeah, I put Jessica's uh, contact info in the chat. Uh, she's very proactive and and works closely with their management. And they are they they specialize in small small town broadband access. And that's really what their whole market is. Three Lakes is one of their newer markets, uh, but I think they're in 50 or 60 different smaller communities. So this is really their target market is, is not big cities, it's, it's small towns and rural areas. Great, thank you, Kurt. And let's, we've got one more question here. Um, we'll take one more here. Uh, I appreciate your efforts. Uh, my internet is with Northwoods Connect. Uh, but it is expensive. Hope the price will go down someday. And thanks for the warning about Starlink. Um, I guess we'll end that, Bill, with any questions on uh, the cost of things um, and just a final comment as well. We did uh, post the survey, the broadband survey on the chat. Okay, um, good, because so, I, I just did it again, Kathy. Yeah, so, thank no worries. You. Better to have it twice. <laughs> okay, so on, on the cost, this is another area where broadband costs and speeds are all over the board. <clears throat> um, and, and I don't know that we're going to see much consistency, but there's a new, well, it's, it's a fairly new program called the FCC Emergency Broadband <laughs> Fund. And it received funding in 2020 and just received a lot more funding. And I think the, the number sticks out in my mind, $3.1 billion. So if you're interested in that, and it's, um, it's, it, it's kind of to expand the affordability of broadband. And I think it's up to $50, $75 a month to help with the cost of broadband and a one-time $100 discount off of some piece of technical device, computer, laptop, tablet, et cetera. So if you would Google or your favorite search engine, uh, FCC Emergency Broadband Fund, you can find how to apply for that fund. Take advantage of it, take advantage of it. So uh, Kathy, with that, thank you to VCEDC. Thank you for the remote workers. Um, we're all, uh, you know, we're all in this thing together. So uh, we're going to improve our broadband in the county and Kurt and Carol beyond. And, and, and if I could just encourage everyone, um, there's a wealth of information on our website, um, vilascountyedc.org slash broadband. We've got a dedicated broadband page. Um, and uh, like I said, you'll find the Jonathan's extensive blog about Starlink, as well as a lot of other helpful information. So um, I'd encourage you to, to kind of keep up to date with what's going on uh, with us um, by going there. Great, thank you everyone. We will share this recording with you um, and we will have it up on our website as well. So uh, keep the ideas coming. This idea about broadband came from our last remote worker meetup. So please do feel free to email us or um, post on social media any ideas that you have for future meetings. And uh, we appreciate your time today. Um, now we hope everyone gets out and enjoys the beautiful Northwoods weather that we have. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>